I just have one thing I want to bring up. A couple people have questioned on our appeal for the administrative order. Um, some, I guess it's confusing people because we're saying in paragraph S, the administrative order is unlawful and unreasonable since the town has already undertaken a considerable cost, the correction of the condition causing contaminants to enter the water system in the Hampton Tidal Marsh. And then we say there is no evidence that another failure is probable or likely. So some people, by reading those two sentences, are thinking that, well, why do we have this warrant article? Pipes got fixed. You know, this. I, I, I'm. I can't help but almost laugh when I say this. No. But I was wondering, maybe, Mr. Manager, or even Town Council, if you could maybe explain why this was worded the way it was when we uh, sent the appeal in, just to clarify. Well, first of all, <clears throat> if this is going to happen, it's going to be replaced. The position is that it should be the town doing this work, not the state. Okay, the taxpayers, in our opinion, are the ones who have the jurisdiction to approve, and they should have the jurisdiction to regulate. Okay? The reason that the, the, um, the appeal has been filed is because the law says without filing an appeal, we have no voice in what happens in this entire system. It's completely out of our control, and we don't want that to be out of the control of the taxpayers of the town and the residents who live here. The reality is that we have a number of pipes, actually there are four pipes running through the marsh. Two were discontinued before, and these two that are there now that are currently operating are the two, two that uh, we rely upon to, to move effluent from uh, the Church Street Station over to the, uh, uh, the treatment plant. The point is that, that we have no way of maintaining those pipes, absolutely none. We also have no way of cleaning or inspecting them. Pipes of this nature need to be cleaned and inspected on a regular basis. We need to know the condition of those pipes, and we're unable to do that without spending Six millions of dollars to, in fact, dig them all up to look at the inside of them in three or four different places and, and clean them out which may or may not be possible, depending upon how deep the pipe is. And some of those pipes are pretty deep. They actually run underneath the rivers that are out there in the marsh. If you can't maintain it, then there's no guarantee that you'll be able to operate it. Um, the conversations that we have had with the state and the EPA are such that should we, in fact, have another failure of a pipe, it won't be a question about waiving penalties and fees. They'll be assessed. And, and we will have to pay those out of the taxes that are raised by the taxpayers. And we don't really want to do that. Right. It's, it's like, I guess it's like owning a 1948 motor scooter. And if you, you, you need to have work done on it, you need to have work done on it. And that's kind of what we have here. We have 50-year-old pipes running through the marsh that can fail at any time. It could be because of an earthquake. It could be a failure somewhere in the piping system that's out there that we have no way of examining. We have no way of cleaning the pipes to send a camera down through them to photograph it to see if there is a problem. So we're kind of in the dark. And we have to trust in the good Lord to protect us. And we know that if we really want to be protected and we really want to have a system that works and will account for the growth that's currently going on at the beach, we need to have bigger pipes, and we need to have in an area where we can get at them at any time. So that's the reason the article is in there. That and a whole bunch of real fancy engineering terminologies that I'm not going to get into because we'd be here for three hours trying to explain what they mean. But the reality is that, that we need to maintain it just like we maintain our personal homes. And they need to be uh, reliable at all times without question, and we need to be able to repair them at all, and examine them at all times and clean them at least once a year, and we can't do that now. Thank you for clarifying. Anything else into old business? Negative. New business. I just want to oh, ask, oh. Um, sure. do, you, do you have um, an example that you can give us of when the state did fine communities? I've been, and I can't remember the names of the two towns, but two towns have been fined for failure to, uh, to repair uh, sewer lines in the state of New Hampshire. It's an unusual event because what happens is they, 
if you have a failure, they give you uh, a notice and you're required to fix it. And, and uh, if you do, there's nothing more said. Uh, however, if the, if the pipe does rupture again, and this has happened before, um, then you're subject to those fines. And I know they don't want to give them because they're just a pain in the neck to try to give and try to collect, as a matter of fact, because you, that money should really be going to fix it, not finding people. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, one of those towns, as I recall, I think it was Newmarket, that had a problem with, uh, with a sewer line that failed twice. And there was a, there was a fine associated with it. I know that um, the state does, and I, and I did pay a fine in one of the towns I worked in, in New Hampshire, because they failed to, to, uh, to correct the problem. Very small fine, but it was a fine nevertheless. And it, it did not represent a breach into a water body. That's, a, that's about as serious as you can get. That's, that's the Flint, Michigan situation all over again, where you breach something that's a significant contaminant into a water body. So we don't want to do that, and I don't think we will do it. We'll, we'll do what we need to do, and I think the town will do what they feel they need to do, and we'll move forward with it. December 2013, Newmarket faces $37,500 a day fine if wastewater yeah, but did they do it? That's what I'm saying. No, they didn't. And uh, Hampton has a long history of uh, working with the state, and they'll continue to do that. We have always worked very closely with the state, and we've never had a problem in the past. That's why we haven't been fined before. Yes. Yep. And we work closely with them. Right. 